computer. Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Geraldine Bissett Joseph. Energy Awareness Month is presently upon us, and with that being the case, today I'm joined by two energy officers from within the Renewable Energy Division of the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy, that's Ms. Benice Joseph and Mr. Kurt Inglis, and they join me today to give us some insight into the month and the activities that we can actually expect to see happening within the month. So thanks of all, first of all, sorry, thank you for joining <laughs> us today. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Okay, now the calendar activities for Energy Awareness Month seems to be packed with this year um, with a, a varied amount of activities and also you seem to be targeting a lot of different groups. Can you tell me what those activities are actually going to be and also can you tell us why specific groups were picked as they were to be targeted? Okay, so the activities that we're having this year, like you rightfully said, it targets a large number of groups. We at the unit realized that it is important to go after all of St. Lucia, but not just focus on one set of, of persons, mm -hmm. right? So this year we decided to make our approach all encompassing and look at a number of different groups, such as the young persons in the schools, the drivers on the road, mm -hmm. Um, the general public who are looking to invest in energy efficiency and renewable energy, okay. right, as well as the business community. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Are there certain targets that are actually set by the Energy Unit this year in observance of um, Energy Awareness Month, um, which are different from previous years? For instance, I know that there is actually a heightened um, look at geothermal energy this year within the activities. So uh, uh, can we expect something different this year than the previous years before? Well, as compared to the other years, we usually target certain specific groups. Mm -hmm. um, this year, we focus on geothermal since we're going into the next phase of geothermal, mm -hmm. hopefully within um, 2019. Okay. So there's a combination of activities with including geothermal mm -hmm. and the normal activities that we would have had in the previous years. So we've gone out, we've targeted not only one set of school groups like the primary schools where you usually target either the primary schools or the secondary schools. Mm -hmm. This year we've dis decided to target both groups mm -hmm. and go all across the island okay. without that. Okay, brilliant. Now you, you, you've said that, you know, that's what you're, you're hoping to do. You've mentioned mm -hmm. the, the schools and such like, but what else can we look forward to within the month? Okay, so just let me give you a short rundown of mm -hmm. the actual activities that we're having. Okay. okay, so we mentioned the school visits, mm -hmm. right? We're also having our energy fair, mm -hmm. right? So at this fair, we're hoping to showcase the companies in St. Lucia who do energy services and sell energy products. Okay. So we're hoping that the public can come out and see what St. Lucia has to offer mm -hmm. in this sector. Mm -hmm. We also have our electric vehicle, car, uh, electric vehicle rides and test drives. Okay. So the government has an initiative where we are trying to move away from the conventional fossil fuels that are in not only the energy sector but also the transport sector, mm -hmm. right? And as part of this initiative, the government procured three electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we are allowing the general public to experience these electric vehicles so they can understand the new direction that the transport sector is taking, not only in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. but across the Caribbean and the world. Mm -hmm. And so we're exposing okay. them to this. And okay. we also have some other activities for geothermal specifically where we want the youth to give us their feedback or their ideas in terms of geothermal. So we have a geothermal infographics competition okay. where we are letting the youth show their talents mm -hmm. when it comes to graphic designing, where they can design something that depicts the benefits of geothermal 
and there are attractive prizes that they can win also for their efforts. Okay. Right? okay. In addition, we have the school debates mm -hmm. where we have a range of topics, some on energy. Mm -hmm. So they're, they, they go through several rounds mm -hmm. um, and until they reach a final. So there are different topics um, in each round in okay. the school's debate. And uh, as I said, we have geothermal kind of engraved in, in the, the awareness month activities. Mm -hmm. So during this month, we'll also be having consultations to different um, um, persons in the Sufre region on the geothermal explorations and the next phases of geothermal. Oh, brilliant. That's a lot. <laughs> that sounds very interesting. That's a lot. That's a lot. If the, the you mentioned that there's a competition, that one really kind of got my t attention, mm -hmm. the, um, the, 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 the graphic design one. Mm -hmm. Where could, uh, maybe if somebody's watching right now, where could they go to find out more about entering the competition and such likes? Okay, so very soon we will be putting out all the information that they need for entry into the competition. Mm -hmm. So the department will be sending out a press release that has all the information that they need. Mm -hmm. um, it's targeted at the secondary and tertiary schools, mm -hmm. right? So that the young persons can really go out there and, and put what they have on display. Okay. Right, so we will be contacting them directly as well mm -hmm. to give them the information about how to form teams and what is required for the competition and as well as the different prizes that they can win. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Now you also mentioned the uh, private sector fair, right? Mm -hmm. What can one expect from that fair and, and ha has the, the, the sector been very forthcoming to actually take part within the fair itself? Well, the, the fair has been running for a few years now. It actually started way back when, mm -hmm. um, but then we've revived it um, since 2014. Okay. And it's been going on for a number of years. And it's, uh, it's been increasing every single year. We have more private sectors, um, businesses coming in. We have more persons expressing interest in the fair. Okay. So this year, it's going to be like a one-stop shop for renewable and electrical um, energy efficiency appliances. Mm -hmm. So you would have businesses with um, energy efficient appliances there. You'd have businesses with renewable energy mm -hmm. um, appliances or systems. You would also have the banks mm -hmm. offering the um, in whatever uh, packages they have for loans um, or whatever it is that they, they offer. Mm -hmm. We also would have um, Bureau of Standards to tell you what are the standards for those, mm -hmm. uh, those items. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-stop shop to learn, to educate. We also have, in addition, we have mm -hmm. what we call a pathway, an energy sustainable pathway mm -hmm. for the students, mm -hmm. for, for children. So okay. we'll give them a map mm -hmm. and they go around to the different areas um, answering questions mm -hmm. and getting stickers and eventually they would win some very attractive prizes. We also have prizes for average persons coming in. Mm -hmm. You fill out our questionnaire and mm -hmm. you get a chance to win some very attractive prizes also. Excellent, brilliant. Now, Mr. Inglis, you mentioned um, uh, a little while back at mm -hmm. the beginning of the interview about the, um, um, the electric vehicles that are yeah. being brought in. I understand there's also going to be training for mechanics for yes. the electric vehicles. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So as part of this same initiative, we want to ensure that there is an enabling factor that when persons come in with these vehicles, mm -hmm. that they can find everything that they're used to with a regular um, internal combustion engine vehicle. Okay. So we want to build capacity mm -hmm. in the private sector and government mm -hmm. mechanics so that they can maintain and repair these vehicles because it has been a concern that persons have when right. it comes to moving into a newer technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So we are facilitating that um, okay. move and that capacity building. Okay, brilliant. Well, we're going to take a short break right now, but we're going to be back in a minute because I want to hear more about the fair and also just your insight into the, the whole geothermal um, you know, take on what's going on in St. Lucia at the moment. So stay tuned, we'll be back in a minute. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website 
at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Hello and welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm Jordan Bissett Joseph. Today we are talking about Energy Awareness Month and I am joined by Miss Bernice Joseph and also Mr. Kurt Inglis. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about um, the electric cars, the mechanics and such like, but there's also another concept for the month that I know that's, that actually has taken place before and that's No Iron Day, right, or Chiffony Day. It's a, quite a novel concept. Tell us a little bit about that and where the idea for that even came, up, came about. Okay, so we thought of having an activity where the entire country can take part, mm -hmm. where it's not separated by a sector, mm -hmm. but everyone can take part in it. And having an activity that highlights the large amount of energy that is used in homes. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the No Iron Day, mm -hmm. right, where we encourage persons to think about the electricity that is consumed through something as um, so an activity that happens daily as ironing, right. right? And we encourage them to, as a symbol of showing that you didn't use your iron that mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. to wear clothes that doesn't require ironing, for mm -hmm. one, or your unironed clothes, mm -hmm. right? So that you can realize that things that we do around our houses, around our homes, consume large amounts of energy. Mm -hmm. So conservation is one of the major aspects, the major selling points of the No Iron Day. Okay. And just in addition, mm -hmm. um, as Kurt said, this targets the whole population. Right. It targets um, from the, the little ones growing up to the, 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 mm -hmm. the older folks out there. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to the schools, we've even gone to a special needs schools mm -hmm. where the children were all excited about Chiffon Day. Mm -hmm. um, although we told them it was no iron day this year, but they, they, they are convinced that it's Chiffon Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good, okay. Um, I know we've touched on it before, mm -hmm. but with there being such a heightened interest in pursuing renewable energy options um, rather than um, energy from fossil fuels, how else would you say that the observance of Energy Awareness Month fits into the, the trends that we're seeing today? The, well, the observance of Energy Awareness Month is fits into our public education mm -hmm. because it's one thing for you to go out there and talk about renewable energy, but mm -hmm. how can it affect, how can you be part of it? And that's what we want to bring out to the, the, the public, mm -hmm. that everyone, every solution can be a part of the change, can be a part of the movement mm -hmm. into renewables. And it's not only looking at just energy efficient, saving money, saving dollars. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at our climate. We're looking at climate change and right. our, our commitments to the Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. We also have our nationally determined contributions. Mm -hmm. So all of this comes into one and it, it, it's saying that it's not the government, it's not um, higher level persons, but mm -hmm. every citizen of St. Lucia can contribute to our energy independence. Right. Okay, brilliant. So what are some of the major achievements or milestones that you would say St. Lucia has achieved in the pursuit of energy independence today thus far? Well, we have our first utility scale solar farm that was okay. put down by Lucelec, yeah. right? This is a three megawatt solar farm and this goes very far in terms of meeting our renewable energy target. So we have a target set of 45% of renewable energy mm -hmm. by 2025, mm -hmm. right? So having these large scale projects contributes greatly to that. Mm -hmm. But the department also goes through all sectors to, to have change in terms of the fuel that we use. So mm -hmm. we do a lot of projects in terms of renewable energy projects in schools. So mm -hmm. we have solar PV plants installed mm -hmm. at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, mm -hmm. at the Grosely Secondary School. Mm -hmm. We have solar PV installed at the Mental mm -hmm. Wellness Center, right? So we have been installing solar PV um, at various government buildings, mm -hmm. right? 
also we are targeting like i said mm -hmm. the transport sector right. so we have been going around educating persons mm -hmm. in terms of the move to more efficient vehicles okay. right so the unit has been very busy trying to meet these renewable energy targets okay. and in addition to what my colleague said about our renewable energy mm -hmm. um, installations We've, not, we've also gone into energy efficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Graham Louise building, which is the first government building next to the car, the, the, the car port, right. the car park, sorry. Car park, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> um, this is one of the, the buildings that we've um, done a complete yeah. lighting retrofit. And oh, okay. it's not only um, just reducing the usage, we've actually mm -hmm. improved the lighting levels mm -hmm. at that building. Mm -hmm. We've done a complete overhaul of the electrical system mm -hmm. at Graham Louise building. And this is what just one of the buildings. Yeah. We've done the general post office, we've done the, the um, infrastructure building, mm -hmm. and there are a number of projects in the pipeline. So in addition, we have um, mm -hmm. PV panels to be installed at the yeah. Owen King mm -hmm. um, Hospital. Mm -hmm. We also have um, the solar car port yes. to go on the, the union parking the lot. infrastructure building, oh. the parking yes. lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to put a solar car port there with mm -hmm. electric vehicle charging, charging stations. stations. Yeah. So it's oh. one thing to have electric That's vehicles, brilliant. but yeah. you mm -hmm. need to have the charging That's stations. Right. Yeah. So we've done that and mm -hmm. we also in the process of signing an agreement mm -hmm. to actually put in a solar car port in the south of the island also mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we we need we we had, uh, understand the the topography of our island yeah. so mm -hmm. we need one in the north one in the south mm -hmm. so we're going to put electric vehicles charging stations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and hopefully go into as far as putting solar um street lights mm -hmm. at the UNR international yeah. airport yeah. and these are just a few there mm -hmm. are uh, wow. several more in the pipeline yeah. that we've been doing well that's yeah. not being done mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's nice to know that's <laughs> not being done okay um <laughs> now i've mentioned before about the the geothermal mm -hmm. um aspect of the thing i know that 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 is very much a part of this year's activity so um, can you kind of share with me a bit, where are we with the geothermal resource development in St. Lucia at the moment? Okay, so St. Lucia started geothermal many years back, mm -hmm. but um, we've decided with new technologies and with um, update of ac um, activities with geothermal, mm -hmm. we've gone into it from since 2014. Mm -hmm. um, we've done the surface explorations. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's basically determining where your resource is mm -hmm. and what areas do you look at. Mm -hmm. Because we have the World Heritage Site in Sufra, we've had to look on the outskirts of that area yeah. to mm -hmm. look at um, geothermal resource deve development. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done the surface explorations. We've identified three areas where mm -hmm there's a potential for the resource. The mm -hmm. next phase in, um, we've also done the environmental and social impact assessment. Mm -hmm. And the next phase we're going into is exploratory drilling. Mm -hmm. We're just testing your resource and seeing whether it's feasible mm -hmm. for geothermal development. Okay, all right. Now, we're running out of time, but before we actually um, do go, I, I just want to just you know highlight something because in that case, are we to understand that the long-term energy plans for St. Lucia includes a mix of solar, geothermal, and fuel which that we currently use. That's mm -hmm. where we're headed. Yes, um, okay. rightly so. Um, recently, we our cabinet approved yes. our national energy transition, transition strategy, strategy. Mm -hmm. which is just a plan for St. Lucia. It's not a, a short-term plan, it's a long-term plan on how do we get from where we are now mm -hmm. to where we want to go. Okay. So it, it outlines basically a roadmap on how to get to Mm -hmm. achieving our 35 percent renewables mm -hmm. by 2025 mm -hmm. and that includes a mix of solar mm -hmm. geothermal energy efficiency mm -hmm. battery storage mm -hmm. and wind yes. okay, and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to add to what Bernice said mm -hmm. this process was a multi-stakeholder process okay. so it included the government it included private persons it included the utility as well mm -hmm. so everyone is on board mm -hmm. or was on board with this approach mm -hmm. to getting St. Lucia to a sustainable energy source. Okay, mm. all right. Well, to me, that's a brilliant place to end. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a wonderful conversation, and I'm sure you want to make sure that everybody comes out and finds out more about the activities for Energy Awareness Month. But again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of our audience today. Stay tuned to the National Television Network. However, for now, this is me, Jolene B. Set Joseph, for Issues and Answers, saying bye-bye. Thank you.